Moms, you taught me to be independent. You taught me to be a strong black man. I need to leave Chalktown all I wound up dead or in prison, just like the rest of my homeboys. I want to go live with Uncle Ro in Hong Kong. Besides, I got nothing to lose. Hong Kong nights. Yeah. The 13 hour flight to Hong Kong did not quiet my nerves. Hong Kong is so fast paced. The endless shops, the fashion, the mixture of Asian people with Westerners, and the atmosphere all seem to be different from the world I'm accustomed to. Luckily, I had a couple friends to help me get adjusted. Trek is a New Zealander who loves rugby. He tries too much for his own good. He's loud and immature, like a teenager. He's funny though. Dez is a Hong Kong native. He's just the opposite of Trek. I can see us all getting along, hanging out, playing some hoops while I'm out here. Bro is right. Hong Kong is nothing like Chalk Town. These residences are like skyscrapers back home. So many buildings like this, tall, they go up forever, all the way up. For the most part, everyone in Hong Kong seems nice. I guess I was wrong. Just like home, always judging the harmless black man. It finally started to feel like home. I was slowly getting adjusted to the pace and the lifestyle. Hanging out playing basketball with Dez and Trek definitely helped. They love basketball, it's something we all have in common. Trek loves to talk about his game, but he can't play. He needs to stick to rugby. He tries too hard for his own good. Trek says he knows a happening spot that he'll take me to tonight. Let's see how tonight goes. Hey, Jill. You know the old sugar daddy. They be tricking, they tell them girls. I said you can have whatever you like. I said you can have whatever you like. Yeah, stacks on control, no ice. Should I even be here? This seems like a place for single people, and I'm engaged. Sophie keeps saying I'm engaged though, not enslaved. Whether or not I'd like to admit it, she's right. Tonight has been going better than expected. Trek's attempt to find all the single ladies has been entertaining, and so have his conversations. But while we were talking, there was something that pulled me in the opposite direction. And when I looked, she caught my eye. Of course her friends pointed at me and saying something that I would rather not hear. There's something about that girl. And that's when I met Cassie. And that's when I met Marshawn. I normally would have questioned why the guy Sophie pointed to was now approaching me, asking to sit in her now vacated seat, but that thought never crossed my mind. Suddenly, all the thoughts of being engaged to Teddy vanished. Sophie was right again. I haven't had so much fun since before I got engaged. From DDR to pool, Cassie had a spark about her that made me want to get to know her. Cassie and I met for lunch the next day and I started to get to know her for a bit. I found out she was an art student at the Art Institute. We kept talking about life, and I learned that we have a lot in common. How many times must we go through this? You'll always be mine. Cupid only misses sometimes. Once Ro came back from the trip, we were finally able to catch up with everything. We talked about his travels and talked about my experience so far in Hong Kong. Uncle Ro is a very popular man in town. Everybody loves him.
My grandma's taught me everything I know about art. My dream job was to work in an art museum. So I went for a job interview, and I met with the manager of the art museum, and I came out of the interview as a janitor. I met up with some people from the museum and the art institute at the local coffee shop and started talking about art. I told them that our curators knew the art, but not the artists. Rembrandt experienced joy, pain, and poverty. When I paint in Hong Kong, my strokes are less angry and less volatile than when I paint in Chalktown. A curator needs to know this. Though Sophie is my best friend, I can't believe she's still obsessing about cosmetic surgery. She constantly thinks about getting eyelid surgery and lightening her skin, but I keep telling her that those old stereotypes don't matter. But she insists that the lighter skin and the bigger eyes will make her happier. Art students taped my talk about art. I heard that Cassie listened to it. That is not used to chill at the local park. We clicked on different levels. He was the one that exposed me to the game of cricket. That game seems weird to me. In America, I was used to football, basketball, and baseball, and looking at chillies not wearing as many clothes. But I'm not chipping. I like Hong Kong. I see other people roll here. I can get used to the place, you know. I saw this lady at work. She approached me and asked me about a piece of art. I told her that I thought the piece was out of place in that location. I told her that they should separate the works into three categories. French Impressionism, American Impressionism, and Post Impressionism. She seemed surprised that a janitor knew art. I was playing basketball and this older lady approached me. I didn't know what she was saying. I asked Cassie what she was saying. She said I reminded her of LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. I like that. Those guys are my favorites. She turned to me and said she watches me every day. I'm like, that's cool. I told her Joy Gein, which is goodbye in Cantonese. I never knew that being with someone could give me such a warm and radiant feeling inside. To Hong Kong nights. Working like a one man.